Okay, here we go on another Red Back Spider Tank 3 study. This is episode 6. This spider tank started on the 15th of October 2020. This episode looks at the dates between the 29th of November, which is 6 weeks and 3 days since the start of the spider tank, to the 8th of December, which is 7 weeks and 5 days from the start of the spider tank. So up at the end of this episode, the spider tank is just under 2 months old. And because this video is highly educational, we better have the warning. Warning! The warning on this highly educational video is bleep because the YouTube bots are bleep. So the warning is bleep. Warning! Warning! Bleep! Bleep! Okay, this is a very complicated and very interesting episode of Spider Tank 3. There's a lot of Hunger Game moments along the way. So if you are worried about seeing one spider eating another one, maybe this episode is not for you. But it's a real knife edge point of the spider tank because we're starting to see some spiders take command of the spider tank. And there's also another dynamic of the black house spiders that are introduced in part 5 starting to play out their game as well. Although their game is very different versus the red back spiders. Like previous episodes, I'll fish out all the things we need to look at. I'll come in closer if I can, slow it up as well, also put red circles around things where you need to look, maybe you'll see things that I don't see, and to get your head around a red back spiderling versus a black house spider spiderling, well the black house spiders are fairly bland looking, there's no patterns on them, that's one easy way to tell one from the other. And also at this time in the spider tank we're starting to see the gender divide in the older red back spiderlings. The male versus female divide is something which is really important to watch from this point on in the spider tank right up to the end. I'll just pick up on that spider that was caught a tad earlier in this video and the red back spiderlings operate in exactly the same way as the adult spiders in the way they capture things. They use web first, then they'll come in for some venomy bites, often multiple bites. They wait for the venom to take effect and then they'll come in and they'll start feeding. Now in spider tank 3, and I spoke about this in the previous episode, it's important to understand something that's been fed on, which gets shriveled up to basically nothing, versus other spiders that have died in here, but they've died in the web. Now I had that thought bubble that yes, the spiders died in the web because of starvation, they became weak, and I've had people come in and comment about this as well. They also believe it's a starvation factor going on. Really, the only way to progress and go forward in spider tank 3 is to obviously take out little brother or sister and if you don't do that well your fate will be sealed by dying in the web and so often when there's feeding going on in spider tank 3 other spiders will just hang around nearby and they might come in and they might attempt to grab a free meal that's fairly low risk activity the risky thing to do is to capture something and if you look carefully when these things go on Sometimes the original spider will stand their ground and the other spiders will scurry away. And I think that's what's happened in this case. And I think this spider is a female. It's very hard to tell at this scale of spiderling. And this is a very interesting dynamic to see going on. So the spider that's just fed basically goes forward a step in spider tank three. But at this point, redback spiderlings aren't the only thing on the menu. There are the black house spiderlings in here now, and they are operating in a very different way versus the redback spiders who are spread out all through the tank. The black house spiderlings are clumped together in groups, and one big difference about these spiderlings versus redbacks is they don't move very much. That's a very important thing to do in Spider Tank 3 because... Every time you move, you're sending out vibrations to other spiders in the tank who are looking for a feed. Possibly a fantastic survival strategy in Spider Tank 3 is, very simple, don't move. At this point of the Spider Tank, I like to focus my camera on some of the more established spiders. I do that because I'm sort of thinking that's where the action is going to happen because these spiders are obviously making all the right moves. Sometimes nothing happens. There's lots and lots of footage of basically nothing. There's times when the spiders don't move at all for seemingly days. And then sometimes they capture something and it looks like a red back spider has nabbed a black house spider. And I'm pretty sure that's the first time I've seen this going on. Will this be a trend or will the trend reverse? 
And in seeing this, we better fire the tribute cannon. We should do that every time we see a spideling get nabbed by another spideling. And what was also interesting as this was going on, the tight pack of Black House spidelings started to move a bit and started to not look as easy in Spider Tank 3 as they were looking a week ago. Maybe those Black House Spider Spidelings are starting to realise they're not in Kansas anymore. Down at the bottom corner of Spider Tank 3, there's a lot of Spidelings that assemble. There's like a cloud of web they like to hang around on. I've spoken about that in previous episodes. And I use a light to lure the spiders to be in front of camera. But maybe in this footage you start to get a bit of scale between a more established redback spidling, or it's a small spider now, versus the other spidlings in the tank. And when you're larger, and obviously you've been very good at nabbing things and having a feed, well you start to pick and choose whenever you want to have a feed. I watched a lot of footage of this section of the spider tank. I never saw other spiders come and challenge the larger female redback spider that's really commanding the area. Yes, this one's a confirmed psycho spider and I remember in previous spider tanks sometimes there's that redback spider that will just gorge itself no matter how full or recently it's had a meal. Sometimes they just can't stop eating. On the side of the top ring of spider tank 3 there is that clump of the black house spider spiderlings and as I said before, they don't do much moving. And if I compress some video here, which will show a large scale of time, you'll just see that they basically do near next to nothing. Now, there are a couple of redbacks which are hanging around near this zone, but I've got a feeling that those Black House spidlings set up a sort of webby matrix around them. There's also the skins there. They've been shedding their skins and that's the way spiders grow. In fact, you'll see lots more of that going on because you'll see the redbacks shedding their skins plus these spiders here. Yes, it's all quite interesting seeing how the spiders grow up and the last bit of footage we'll take a look at in episode 6 shot on the boroscope camera and it was shot on the last day of episode 6 which is the 8th of December and we will see the largest spiders doing what they do best, plus the very last redback spider egg sac to hatch in the spider tank. Okay, first up, take a look at the black house spider spiderlings. Pretty boring looking, and they don't move around much at all. The only way I can make them move and scamper is by putting some tweezers in there and teasing them to move. You'll see their skins quite clearly now, up nice and close. But they're doing it in their own style. The bulk of them are up around that white ring, up the top of Spider Tank 3. There is the cloud of them further down. But sadly, I think I can also see footage here of what looks like a red back that's grabbed a Black House Spider. So again, fire the Tribute Cannon. And I think the only way the red backs can get a Black House Spider is when they're away from their webby cloud of protection that they seem to have around their zone. It's very early day still for the Black House Spider Spidlings. Will they form a strategy to take out Redback Spiders? That's yet to be seen. Okay, if you remember back to the previous episode, Episode 5, there was the Redback Spider Exact that was open too early. You could see very immature Spidlings inside. I did some very sketchy brain salad surgery to save these Spidlings because they're our little friends. This is Egg Sack 11, and lo and behold, in this episode, right at the end, these spidlings have matured, and look at them now. They are scampering for their life, they are looking fine and healthy, and they have got no idea what little life they're starting to enter. A lot of people will just say, well, these little spidlings would just be cannon fodder for the more mature redbacks that are getting around in Spider Tank 3. You know what? I think you're right, but hey, who knows? Those black house spider spidlings might all of a sudden think, hey, there's those little redbacks, we might have a bit of a nibble on those. They look like fun to eat. But I'm sure there are many people who saw the footage of me trying to recap the egg sack that was open. They just thought, what a mess. Leo's killed all those spidlings. But no, 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 you are wrong, wrong, wrong. The spidlings are okay. And I'm actually feeling really good for that. I love my redback spidlings. And I've got a bit more ball camera footage of the show. It's a bit of a smorgasbord of all sorts of things, and a lot of the things you see are self-explanatory. The thing that I'm sort of not seeing, or not seeing enough of, is the male 
Redback spiders at this point, I'm sure they're in there, but it was the females, to me, that were doing the more dynamic things. But then again, it's the males that take less risk. They are the ones that will come along and scavenge a meal versus capturing a meal. And when you're stuck in a tank full of other psychopathic spiders, that might be the best strategy to get through all this. Of course, there are corpses on the ground, shriveled up legs and looking all sucked out means it's been fed on by another spider. If the spider's just laying there intact, well, it's just passed away. And taking a look at the biggest spiders up the end of episode 6, it certainly looks like it's girl power all the way in Spider Tank 3. It does look like the females rule the roost. But in Spider Tank 3, to maintain that healthy waistline, you need to keep eating more food. Being a larger spider may play out as a disadvantage. You're in an environment with a diminishing amount of food. It's just like the Hunger Games. There will only be one winner, and yes, one spider does walk free from Spider Tank 3. Here's a sneak peek into the next episode, which is episode 7. As you can see, the rich are getting richer and the poor get the picture. Now, in the next episode, the male redback spiders which are in the tank, they are in there, they're fairly elusive, and even in this episode, which was episode 6, they are a difficult spider to identify. You really need to have super spider eyes to ID a young male redback spider. But by the next episode, and especially by episode 8, the male redback spiders, who are doing it in a different way, are certainly in there, and they are playing a very different game versus the female redback spiders. The male redbacks only live for six to seven months, but to get to their full maturity takes about half that time. That's about three months. And once they have matured, you can really tell the difference between male versus female. I think maybe one way I'll describe the male spiders is like this. They are stealthy. They're like undercover agents that do it differently. And if I was stuck in a tank full of psycho female redback spiders, I would be doing it differently as well.